Okay, Pops, we are in for a good one here. Miss Kimberly Klein, how you doing? Hello. Is joining <laughs> us. We did a video back in October of last year, and it was all about how when you're at the dealership, you're getting forced, really, really, really not close, uh, as close to forced as possible to buy all sorts of add-on products, low jack, paint protection, whatever, the list goes on and on. We recently launched our car dealer reviews and got over a thousand of them in a bit over a week. I don't want to say everyone, but a lot of people are dealing with forced add-ons. Plus, on the community forum, a lot of people are telling us they're dealing with forced add-ons. Miss Kimberly Klein has a tactic that you can use when you're at the dealership, before you go to the dealership, to kind of... I'm going to use it. I'm going to say fight back against that. Push back. Push back against Push that. Back. This is why we're a team. Yes. Yes. I thought let's get her on the channel. Let's have her share her wisdom with all of us. Absolutely. I mean, and, and what Kimberly says goes because, well... <laughs> She was the F and I goddess for fifteen plus years. Well, I don't know if I'd say go they certainly didn't call me <laughs> the F and I goddess back then. But don't you love the dealerships that say or are now saying we don't charge over MSRP? I, I love that. We all love to hear that, which is crazy yes. to me. But um, then later to find out, or shortly thereafter, that you've got another $3,000 in forced ads. That happens every day. Don't, we hear it, don't we? All the time. 100%. See, it, see it in the forum every day. Every day. So what I would like to do is have, um, let's empower the people and have them challenge the dealership. It's easy. It might work. Uh, I think it's a great shot anyway, but... Let's all remember that the rule is every product has a what? It has a contract. Contract. Yes. Yes. All right. Every product <laughs> has a contract. So I have three ways to, to challenge this um, or, as you said, to push back on these forced products. So whenever a dealership or a salesperson says, oh, yeah, that's the theft or etch, um, it's already on the car, you have to take it. You must take it. I would say, if you're at the dealership, scenario number one would simply say, okay, let me see the contract. I wanna learn about this product. Why? In bold at the bottom of the contract, whether it's theft or paint and interior protection, whatever the product is, look for the clause that says, the purchase of this protection program is voluntary key here, it is not a requirement for the purchase, lease, or financing of this vehicle. Look for that, people. It's in bold. It should be on the very first page, and some product contracts will also have a declination box that says, sign here, I wish to decline this product. Look for that. So there you are, you're in the dealership you ask for the contract, they may give you a little bit of pushback. Be nice about it and just say, I know, I know you have these additional products. I just wanna take a look and see exactly what the contract says and then look for that. Scenario number two would be if you're doing it via email, do the same thing. Could you please email me the contract on ABC products so I can take a look at it? Look for that clause. Or the one that I really like is, <laughs> Wait until you have done all the front end work. You've got your OTD, you know they're giving you four stats, and then you get into the finance office. When you get into the finance office and you're going over all these documents to sign, one of them better be that contract that goes with whatever product they're making you buy. And then bring it up. Just say, wait a second, it says here, I don't have to buy this. I don't have to get this. I see a declination box. I decline this product. Take the price of that $299, $695, $999, whatever it may be. Take that off. I like that way because you're through the process. If you're confident about it and you've made it that far to the finance office, what better time to say, oh, wait, I'm either going to leave, you know, or just take that off of the contract. And at that point, 
trust me, if you were to do it that way, well, the finance manager is going to go running into the sales manager's office to say, well, the customer's saying that that we either have to take this off because it says on on the contract that it's not mandatory, it's voluntary, and they're going to leave. And the sales manager, knowing that probably they have four, five, six hours invested in this customer yes. is going to go in there and at a certain point he's going to acquiesce yeah he or she is going to acquiesce because they don't want the deal to blow up in the finance office and if they let you walk then then walk but more than likely 90 99 times out of 100 they're going to figure out a way to make it work whether it be um they end up selling you the stuff at their internal cost as opposed to the retail amount. Uh, but they will work with you at that point because they don't want to deal to blow out of the finance no. office. They do not. Nothing discourages a salesperson more than that. Is this going to work in every situation? It may not because the dealership might say, okay, take it or leave it. You know, yes. they might be the ones to actually walk on the deal. But at least it empowers people to challenge this. This is crazy. It, I'm going to sell this to you at MSRP. Oh, by the way, we've got an additional $3,000 in whatever fluff. That's, that's insane. I want people to know that you have the option. You've got the choice. It's on the contract. So ask for it. This is, this is totally brilliant, Kimberly. Thank you for bringing this and, and sharing it. It reminds me, you know, we had the Napleton news that broke a couple weeks ago now. They got fined by the FTC and the, the Illinois State's Attorney General brought the, the, the case that they ended up admitting no, no wrongdoing to, but it was a $10 million fine that they uh, have to pay back. And that money goes to customers. 83% of customers at nine Napleton stores ended up buying these forced ads uh, and bogus fees. And this is the type of stuff. Who knows if it worked, would have worked at Napleton, but it sure as hell would have been, sure as hell would have empowered that person sitting there who's thinking to themselves, "Well, I just I invested six hours into this. I mm -hmm. need a car. All right, they're putting it in the loan. Like I guess that's okay. Ah, okay, fine." But if you do exactly what you just said, even if you end up walking it or the dealer ends up walking, think about how how level that playing field now is. Yeah. There's a contract. We're both looking at the same thing. It's no longer you have this information and I'm in the in the dark on it. We're both looking at the contract. And now you can look me in the eyes and say, I don't want to do business with you because you're not going to make us extra profit by not buying this thing. But then at least you have to face that demon and I don't. Like, I'm right. empowered. I love this. This is such pertinent and relevant information. It's a great tactic. Yeah, I, I would love to see people try that. I really, really would, because we see so much of it in our forum community. We really do. So power to you. Go for it. Do it. Try it. Bring it up. Let me see the contract. Absolutely. And like I say, dealerships don't ever really want to see a car deal blow they up don't. in the finance office. I, I, I know when I used to talk to customers and they go, well, well, What's the rate? I said, we, I don't know exactly yet. They've submitted to the, the central interest banks rate. the yeah. interest rate on the loan. Trust me, if you walk out of there because you're not happy with the rate, you're going to be the first person that that's ever that's ever done that. You know, it, it, the rarity of that is it just doesn't happen. So the dealership doesn't, the salesperson doesn't want that deal to blow up. The sales manager doesn't want that deal to blow up. The F&I manager, in reality, doesn't want that deal to blow up. Nobody wants to have invested the amount of time that they have and gotten zero for it. So yeah, it's a great tactic. Try it. Use it. Push back. And uh, I think more, more likely than not, you'll find yourself successful in, in finding a, a common ground that might work for everybody, a compromise that'll work for everyone. I agree. I love it, Kimberly. And if as you use that tactic, feel free to let them know that, you know, you're you're you got your your aunt and uncle, they they, they used to be in the business. <laughs> so you can you can reference that when you're in there. This is really great, Kimberly. Thanks so much for bringing it up. And I think uh, I think this one will be really valuable for for the YA community. I can't wait to see what you come up with next as a way to to push back against. Oh, these I we'll see. I love a good challenge. I love a good challenge. And dealerships are giving us every reason every day. <laughs> for us to challenge them. Exactly. Well, thank you both. Really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, Zach. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. See you, Kimberly. Bye.